question here we got it why did I start up the Pragma bikes and uh yeah wow what a year it's been for everybody check this if you know how much these wheels are worth let us know down below this is a genuine Pinarello and uh, I haven't even built it up I haven't built it up it's got fly weights in it it's just been sitting there you know sitting there for the last year nice bike man I've ridden one before good bike is it lighter better than it's not it's not um one thing I've noticed with lightweight bikes, fast bikes, whether it's a mountain bike or a gravel bike or a road bike, is that the light of the bike, to a degree, like a five kilo bike doesn't ride that nice, but like, you know, your sub seven kilo bikes with, you know, lightweight wheels that feel stable on the road and the braking surface is fantastic, the gear ratios are suited to your terrain and cadence, the saddle works for you, the bike, you just want to ride it. Uh, you just want to ride it regardless of the brand and so I've been you know, racing for 23 years UCI races racing people like Norton whatever just race you know street races official races races in Belgium races in Australia I'll just race anywhere anytime what I love now about these days is you know back when I first started racing in the late 90s mid 90s 97 um, you know to have a race you'd have to get UCI license and we would go and race crits and road races and that was the only racing of the week you know pretty much hardly anyone trained during the week there wasn't many cyclists back then um so you'd race with your friends as well during the week a bit but you know, that was about it but these days there's so many more cyclists on the road people got power meters people on Strava and there's races like every day pretty much everywhere you're going on Zwift like it's just the race scene now is a lot bigger back in the day it was just UCI races you know, that was it. Now, I can go up morning on a Saturday morning at Norton Summit, and there's races from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. People are flexing up there, you know, in bunches and singles and duos. Just, you can race any time. So, I love racing. It keeps you super fit. Whether it's a UCI official race, where you paid, you know, 200 bucks to enter, and you traveled across the globe to get there, and you won, or your pack fill, or you got dropped, or whatever, you know, versus just getting out there on Zwift, or racing yourself on Strava to set your own PR because you live middle of nowhere and there's no one out there riding. You're the only person on your Strava segments, but now you race yourself, which really is the best person to race. Um, but yeah, so I, I got that little experience and that turned me into a weight weenie where I just really appreciated you know, high vibe product that was also high quality, realistic price and durable. Light cheap durable that used to be the thing now you can have light cheap and durable that's that's basically pragma light cheap durable um you know and that's that's what i created tom he was tom ritchie had that quote or was it or was it bontrag keith bontrag or tom ritchie light cheap durable choose two now you can choose three with pragma yeah that's what we created um now i should say the credit's not to me. Um, the credit goes to the engineers who design and credit to the workers who work in the factories in China who make the product that I sell and I ride. You know, that, those wind space wheels. You know, I didn't design that. I didn't make that. You know, I ride that. I promote that. But, you know, the credit goes to the people who actually produced it. You know, I'm just the end, end the consumer there. So I love the fact that I can have these wheels. These are $1,100 wheel set. And I prefer riding them than these top of the top price tag lightweight, you know, get full streamers, which are a nice wheel, handmade in Germany, you know. But I'd rather ride these because the braking surface works better, and they're the same similar weight, pretty much. And if you break a spoke, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So it's just, just crazy like that. So I, I created Pragma to have just the best product out there. You know, the best, literally the best product out there um, that money can buy, you know, at a price that most people in a Western economy can afford. You know, if you're a cyclist, or maybe if you're in Sri Lanka or Bangladesh and you're earning two dollars a day, you probably not to watch YouTube videos either, are you? But um, for the average cyclist, you want to create something affordable because, you know, how much does it cost for a Pinarello frame? How much does it cost for, you know, 
the latest Cannondale, the latest S Works, the latest Canyon. And they're all coming out of China. You know? All coming out of China. Go and listen to the creator of Factor Bikes, uh, Rob G. He's put out some great podcasts there. I think Cycling Maven did one. Uh, Cycling Tips had a great podcast with Rob G from Factor. You know, the guy is probably one of the most experienced people in carbon cycling manufacturing on, who walks the planet today. Maybe he is the most experienced, you know. So, you know, and he says, you know, 99% of the product out there is coming out of China. And it's, you know, and it's, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so people like that, you know, who are dropping truth bombs, myself with my experience of being a consumer and a racer and also working in the bike shops over the years and having great times and very grateful for my experiences. Owning, I've, I've lost count of how many bikes I've owned and I've lost count of how many bikes I've ridden. People, friends' bikes. Hey, Harley, you know, review my bike, critique my bike. I bought a new bike. What do you think of it? Take it for the weekend or take it for a, a spin on the block or take it for an hour. And I get to a test ride and, and it's been, been fantastic. I love doing that. Even though I sell my own bikes, I ride other brands all the time. You know, I buy and sell bikes all the time just to have an experience. Just to pull apart a bike, look at how it was designed, you know, look at how it could be better, things like that. You know, I'm no engineer. I'm just a passionate cyclist. Um, so that's that's my story there. Why I started it? Because I just wanted to ride the very best. I wanted custom paint colours. And I didn't want to pay through the absolute nose. I didn't want to make rich people even richer. It's not because I didn't like them. It's just I'm like, why am I paying for, you know, some doped up pro team? Why am I paying for, like, you know, lawyers and barristers and, you know, all the marketing PR and just, you know, all the stuff, the extra, the shop fittings, and why am I paying for all that? You know, I don't need that stuff, so why am I going to pay for that stuff? If you want that stuff, then you pay the extra, for sure, I get it. You know, so these frames that are made by the big brands, they're probably costing about maybe 150 USD per frame set, frame and fork, 150 to 200 USD. For the, the top of the top price tier, you know, brand name stuff that you see, you know, in the in the big big price tag shops. And then, you know, these people have like logistics and all the stuff to, the markups there. Got to bring out new product, we've got to test it and do all this stuff. And even then it's not foolproof because look at all the recalls these big brands do. And then have to factor in the recall costs as well. That's why I just, I stick with proven designs. You know, this actually works. <laughs> So a lot of people want the latest stuff. This isn't the latest stuff. This stuff's been out for like five, six years. And it's proven in the real world. So that's why, for me, I wouldn't buy the latest S-Works or the latest Pinarello or the latest whatever because for me, it's not proven in the real world. Plus the price tag. The, the markup is insane. And the performance, this is faster than any bike Specialized make in 2021. This is faster and lighter and easy to work on than any bike specialized make in 2021 in the catalog. There's nothing lighter, faster than this. You know, there's nothing. Every single, I would say in my opinion, every single pro rider for specialized in 2021, pro rider, world tour rider, would rather you ride this bike if they're being honest. Not because it's my brand, just because it's lighter and it's faster and it doesn't have those road, rubbing pizza cutters in the back, which you don't need in road racing. So it's, isn't it the same? And the latest S-Works SL7 or the Atheos is about 18 or 15 or 20 thousand dollars Aussie and it's still going to be not as light as this fully built with pedals and cages right. real weight not marketing weight real weight <laughs> stock waves and that's a stock bike it's a SRAM red 10 speed group set I got for maybe 200, 200 or 300 bucks off Gumtree it's the wind space hyper wheels which are like 1100 USD it's uh, you know, the Pragma glycogen frame set bag cookie edition which is like about, you know, four to six, seven hundred dollars, depending on what paint and where you want to ship in the world, you know, and it's a pair of XDR pedals, a seat from AliExpress, it's a super cheap bike, lighter, faster than anything that Pinarello, Specialized, etc. have on the market in 2021. Crazy. Um, and if you don't want proprietary designs, we have the Pragma Balls Deep with the 27.2 seat pros and a BSA bottom bracket and a more standard fork, so options for everyone. And then the gravel bike, the Pragma Gravel Breaker, and then we also have the Pragma Mawson Titanium, which is coming out soon. Um, and also we're going to do a Pragma Cross Country bike for those who wanted that, which is including me. But basically, the, to, I wanted to create a brand that is rider focused um, versus 
business focused. This is a one man show. There's only me. I don't have an accountant. I don't have a lawyer. I don't have a, a PR. I don't have social media analysis. I don't have, in, you know, the engineers have already done their work and been paid and laid. You know, so I don't have all those overheads. So I don't have logistics and super. I've had a little bit of logistics costs. I don't have any of that. So that's why my markup is the least in the industry. Because you don't have to pay for that fill. If you want to pay for the fill because you want the S work sticker or the Parley sticker or the whatever sticker, you know, then then that's your consumer right and, and do that. You know. But uh, yeah, it's this and this frame as well. I've been writing it last year. When it got shipped to me, it got sent to New Zealand, then got sent to Australia. Customs pulled it apart in New Zealand. I think they dropped the frame because it was out of its box. The box had been ripped open. The rear, um, you've seen the original video uploaded, the rear dropout, <clears throat> drive side dropout, it's got a little crack in it, you know, and it hasn't gotten big, it hasn't broken. So I've been thrashing this bike, back of boats in Thailand, back of Jeeps in Thailand, just thrashing it, you know, and it's still holding up. Like from day one, it hasn't got any flex in the frame. You know, I've ridden a few frames out there. That over time, they develop flex in the frame. Just you know, and just like, how much did you pay for the frame? Three, four thousand dollars for the frame, and it's flexing now. <laughs> so yeah, quality, quality here. Um, yeah, so it's uh, and also I rode a lot of Chinese carbon bikes, which is when you say Chinese carbon bikes, that's everyone. That's Trek, that's Specialized, it's Cervelo, it's Factor, it's Giant now. It's, all the big brands made in China. So Chinese carbon bike would refer, you know, most people refer that to something of AliExpress or Alibaba or eBay, which I would say a lot of that product out there would be one dangerous to ride. I wouldn't recommend riding it because the, you know, it's just, it's just business, pure business, like model, which is, it's just, I bought some of those frames, you've seen them in my videos, and the quality has been like inside the fork, the, the fibers are delaminating the steerer, the bottom bracket explodes when you're trying to install a, a BB86 in it, or you get massive creaking or ovalization. Watching him be in these videos, you know, and it's like, why would you risk your safety, your life, your riding experience? You know, I mean, the chances of something failing and hurting you is pretty rare. Let's be honest, it's pretty rare. Um, it's going to be pretty rare. Most carbon fork failures happen when people, you know, they, they have the stem. You know, they have like a big uh, stem penis on top of it on a carbon steerer. Alloy steerer doesn't matter. They've got a carbon steerer. They have their stem here. They've got these spaces on top and the steerer plug only goes to there. So then they tighten their lower stem bolt and then over time it crack, crack, crack. And they ride that for you know a few thousand Ks or a few races, a few cobblestones or bumps. And eventually it starts to crack around here and then it just snaps off. And they're like, oh my God, what happened? Like, you know, this shitty product. And it's like, no. The product was okay, but your steerer plug didn't go deep enough to support your stem bolts, you know. Um, and then you have the ring of death cutting into your steerer. People don't check their forks, they ride with a loose headset. It's not what like brand you ride. You know, if you ride with a loose headset on a carbon steerer, it's going to etch out your fork steerer. And it's going to fail eventually. Um, hopefully not, but it will. And so, yeah, all those experiences, you know. But the ride quality, a lot of these cheap... Uh, frames out there, even some of the expensive ones, the ride quality is poor. It's poor, but the wheels don't sit in the frame straight. Hambini, 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 anyone? The bottom brackets are ovalized. You know what I mean? You ride the bike for a year, and then you're like, I pull the bottom bracket out of this, put my fingers in it. It's like it spins perfectly. There's no like, you know, ovalization. <laughs> the axles actually align. Things like that. Uh, so go watch Hambini's channel. Check him out, Hambini. And then once you once you watch Hambini's videos, some of my videos, another guy I think Peak Talk out there, then you start to go, hmm, this is interesting. Lucia Technic, go and watch Lucia Technic, man. Wow, they're over there in Victoria, cutting open frames. Like <laughs> he did a great video of Cycling Maven. I think Cycling Maven Mark helped put him on the map a few years back, and that was really fantastic. It just goes to show, man. Just because it says S works, you know doesn't mean much other than it's probably cost you a lot of money and it was made this would have been exactly the same cost to produce this seat post here and this seat post here i actually prefer this design because it fits carbon rail saddles this one you have to change the head and the side forces it's like you know it's it's okay but i, I generally find these ones can go loose my probably my favorite seat post 
uh, is a Thompson post, similar design to this. It's an alloy Thompson. But these are still a great quality, you know, a great quality post here. So, yeah, and just parts you can you get spare parts for. That's what we love. Imagine trying to get a spare part for this seat post now. Mm. I mean, some people will never have any problems with their, part. their bikes and proprietary parts. It doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah. Who knows? So it depends what you want. If you want proprietary, if you don't want proprietary, Pragma Balls Deep or the Pragma Mawson, they'll be, they'll be along your lines. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah. That's why we created it. Just to have the best product, best price, super lightweight, super high performance. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of junk out there poor riding experience what's the point of buying a bike for the frame for four five six seven hundred five thousand dollars for a frame set and you don't really like it it's like yeah it's like yeah it doesn't really ride that nice or you get wheels that are just like yeah it doesn't really like you get disc brakes that rub and stuff like that it's like well yeah. if you want disc brakes that rub on the road bike then get cable yeah. or be lucky with hydros but most of them will rub at some point cable is probably the best but uh, not, not rubbing if you're a you know, gravel rider or whatever. Um, what else can we say? That, uh, yeah. Trek sell a pretty good product. Uh, fork wise, you know, I've had a lot of their forks coming out of my little shipping place here, and uh, the quality inside, durability is pretty good. You don't, you don't really see that many rings of death on a Trek, Trek bike. I'm not sure exactly why that is. But uh, maybe Trek owners maintain their bikes a bit better. But they definitely, yeah, the quality seems to be pretty good these days. And uh, again, made in China. Made in China. Genuine Trek product. This is off of Demane. Direct mount brake. So yeah. If you want a frame, go check out duringrod.com. If you've got any questions, message me duringrod at gmails.com. I do get a lot of emails. So if you don't get a reply, don't think I'm snobbing you. It's probably just got pushed down. You know, you send me another email as, as uh, painful and as annoying that might be. That's how we keep costs down. You'll be talking with me. You won't be talking to anybody else when, on the, uh, when it comes to Pragma orders. Um, I do have people help me out with other stuff, but with the bike orders, I want to talk to you and I want to understand what your needs are. And a lot of you have written me over the last year and a half and wanted to buy a frame off me. And I've said, you know what? The bike you got's fine. Just keep it, you know? But get some better wheels in there. Get some better chain rings on there. Get some absolute black 4630 on there, you know? Get some better tires on there. <laughs> Put your seat up. You don't need one of my bikes, but I appreciate the support. I only want to sell to people who you know, really need one, you know? Or maybe they just want one, and they've got experience, and they know how to care for carbon and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I've, otherwise, there is some fantastic bikes out there from big brands. Um, Trek 920 like, is a great gravel bike if you want one today. Trek 920. I'm pretty sure it's a 920. It's got... Two, two inch wheels in it, two inch tires in it, mountain bike cranks, drop bars, goes good. Not super light, but pretty good value. Good touring bike if you want to just go anywhere, something rugged and durable. Um, specialized, the best bike Specialized make in 2021. Um, they make the Specialized Elay Elite. It's 105 rim brake, 27 two seat post, standard seat post clamp, BSA bottom bracket. And it's the best bike Specialized make in 2021 best road bike they make in 2021 and it's cost maybe 1500 or 2000 USD that'd be the best bike it's alloy frame carbon 4 uh, that's the best bike best bike Cannondale make would be I think it's the CAD 13 with uh, direct mount brakes um, otherwise yeah the, the top end stuff these big brands for me it's just like it's too expensive and too heavy for what it is and a super pain in the ass to work on <laughs> these these new bikes with integrated stuff and Integrated bars and stem combo, it's like, oh my god, I would I would be uh, not enjoying being a bike mechanic in 2021 for these, these barrister bikes, these, oh man, but anyway, they get paid well, I guess. So that's the deal there, if you have any questions, let us know down below, um, yeah, this, these are the best product out there. There is a lot of junk out there, there's a lot of overpriced junk, there's a lot of cheap junk, there's a lot of junk that's safe, but the ride quality is really crap. It's like the, you know, the, the absorption of the road, the stiffness, the, the acceleration, the, the handling. <laughs> I rode a bike. I've ridden many bikes. Um, but I remember I was at Mount Lofty um, a year ago. I got to ride 
someone's bike that they bought online. I won't mention the brand because they don't want the mafia after me, but I rode it and I was just thinking, man, like, is this going to snap in me? You know, snap in me, not on me, snap in me. Is this going to, is this head going to snap off and pierce my lungs? It just felt so unsafe. You know, it was, I was just like, oh. I didn't mention it to the guy because he just bought it and I was like, what do you say? Dude, this bike's going to snap on you. It probably would never snap, but it just felt like it was going to. It just didn't feel good. It didn't feel quality. So for the you know couple of hundred bucks he saved, I'm just like, no way, man. But maybe that's the best bike he's ever ridden, and he seemed to enjoy it. So who am I to rain on his parade, you know? That's probably the best bike he's ever ridden. But I've ridden so many, I'm just like, man, what is this junk? You know? not, not me being arrogant, just, you know. If you blindfolded me and put me on the bike, that's the best one, the blindfold tests. Because often people jump on a bike and they see a brand or whatever, they're like, oh, no, it's not good, mate, it's not good. But, you know, blindfold tests, you can put me on some of these bikes blindfolded and I'll be able to say, nah, this is definitely shit versus legit. Um, there you go. Blindfold test is a good one. Anyway, that's the deal here. Unbiased opinion. i will only got to sell what I'd ride. i would only got to sell what I'd own. I'm not, I don't sell what I think will sell. I sell what I myself would buy. That's a big difference, all right? Now, a lot of bike shops, a lot of, um, I shouldn't say bike shops, it's more, the problem comes from the top. The bike shops just sell what the customers want because they've been marketed to by the, you know, the big brands. You know, most of these big brands are run by bankers, accountants, just money, money men, you know, and that's fine. But they're designing products that will maximize profit versus pure riding experience. Like when I, when I pick a frame in my you know, factory catalogs, etc., I'm like, will that enhance the rider's experience or that will be some landfill junk down the track because the proprietary part is no longer available or the bottom bracket's gonna overlies and be turned to junk, you know. Will it get Hambini, will it, I, another, will it get Hambini in a fit? <laughs> and if it will, and the answer's yes, I'm like, I don't wanna sell that, you know, because I'm not gonna like it either. So why would I sell something that I don't like? That's why a lot of people say, Harley, sell me integrated bars and stem. And I'm like, I can, but I'm not gonna. Because I wouldn't ride that, man. I wouldn't ride that. So why would I sell out and sell you something that I don't believe in? You know? Like, if you want to do that, go and ride, go and ride XYZ brand. <laughs> At the end of the day, whatever you ride, whether it's a frame from me or a frame from you know, other people, as long as you're happy with it, and as long as you're riding your bike, building your fitness, exploring, burning more fat, less oil, that's the end of the day, that's the win right there. All right? That's the win. I would rather be dead broke on the street, living homeless with the spiders and praying mantises and have more people on the road, you know, than uh, make millions of dollars selling proprietary junk, overpriced junk, <laughs> so I can put my kids through private school in Aspen, Colorado or whatever. So, yeah. anyway, what do you paint when you buy a product? Why are you paying so much for it? Who is getting that money? Is that money distributed fairly? You know, things like that. When you buy a Pragma product, the employees who make these frames can buy them and ride them if they want. Uh -huh. If you work in the Chinese factory that makes specialized, you know, you can't ride that bike. You can't afford that. The workers who make a specialized bike in my opinion, they, 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 the specialized SL7 tarmac frame set, seven and a half grand Aussie, to, to pick on specialized again, because everyone knows who they are. Um, the worker can't afford that product. Yeah. It's just a carbon, it's just a frame made out of plastic. Right? It's very cheap to make. The worker can't afford that. A worker can afford one of my frames. Right? They can afford one of my frames. If there's a seconds or whatever, you know, Instead of getting thrown out, it gets given out. Right. It's not going to happen on an SL7. It's going to get crunched and dusted. And they sort of have to for brand protection. So what are you paying for when you buy a bike? Right. And I'm not saying not to buy a Specialized or Pinarello or Cannonello or whatever. I'm just saying. Just saying the truth. So you do what you want with that. End of the day, more bikes out there, the better. More bums on bikes, I should say. More bums on bikes. Less bikes parked on the fence. More bikes out there getting ridden. See you on the road.